Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I surely appreciate your uh, your stopping in. If you're a repeat uh, subscriber, I uh, like I always say, guys, I really appreciate uh, everybody stopping back in and the support of the channel uh, over the last uh, several years. Guys, I, like I always say here when I start these videos or try to remember to say this, I always build these videos for like-minded folks just like you and I, trying to help us get to the uh, finish line, just get there quicker more proficiently right so today um what we've got guys i wanted to bring this one to you we're hoping uh five percent chance of rain and about six hours seven hours to get some uh, spray down here um kind of my rule of thumb i like that you know four five six hour time period to get some if you're going to spray anything on your farm right to let it sink in before it hits with rain uh started the process here and <laughs> now it looks like uh, cloud cover moving a little bit here on us that's uh, a little premature but what we've got going on guys I wanted to share this one with you here we are taking uh, the core of the property um, if you follow the channel uh, at all you'll know that I've I had plans you know I planted some switchgrass and I'm bringing back the density of the core and I think that can probably relate to a lot of you that have bought maybe um, you know more open ground or or old cattle pasture or whatever that case is and we're just trying to, you know, improve that depth of cover. We're trying to improve what we've got interior of the farm, right? Um, sadly, sometimes we, uh, we're limited on that, right? So there's all kinds of things that we can do to, you know, grasses to plant and stuff like that, right? Uh, but it's a long-term goal, you know, so always keep in mind if you do have any of these projects where you're trying to reclaim core, um, if you're trying to reclaim some density of the property, you know, build build better core, if you will, more secluded core, it's a long process, so be patient with it. Uh, so today what we're going to talk about, guys, is this. You can see behind me, I've got three locations like this on the farm. Uh, this is probably the least important one, but we're going to start here because this is where we're going to start spraying. Uh, what I'm doing, guys, is I cut these cedars out of the um, cedar extraction. If you followed the Built by Whitetails uh, segments that we've been doing there, I extracted these cedars out of my dough bedding, which, to be honest with you, is right right here. So uh, that is uh, one of these days I need to take you for a walk through there and show you the good regeneration that's coming in there. But what I've done, guys, is I decked all of these cedars out here on this ridge. And then I took the logs, and you can see, I, you know, I took the logs and decked the logs there. They're going to the mill here across the road real quick, or real soon. And uh, so what I've got, though, is to try to build some structure. You know, in these, these center core areas that are old abandoned ag or whatever that case is, right, pasture and stuff like that, we just don't have the structure. Now, you know it's one of those deals if it's if it's an area where you're you know you're not having to walk past then uh you can do this now if it's if it is a place that you know pertains to your access you don't want to do what we're about to do right here because you're bringing deer closer to your you know uh to your access and your egress right so what we've got is i took the tops took the logs like i said piled them up i took the log or the tops and i strategically placed them like two tops and some brush you know or, or some you know limbs that we trimmed off or whatever but one or two tops in each spot i'll flip you around here get done is i'm putting these in strategic piles uh so this is right off the end of one of our food plots so this right here about where the tractor is uh this is all where the switchgrass starts right here and then this there's this opening right here this that's the end of our dough budding it goes right down into a corridor uh, this is a corridor that goes right down into a stand but what you can see, guys, is this field here is in the center of the farm. My access is actually over here on the face, so this has all got screening and everything on it. So my access is on the other side of the slope here, so I can walk up through uh, here and not even, you know, deer don't even know I'm in here. They don't know. And it's just this couple acre piece here that is just was field, right, before it was hay. Um, I've got it seeded right now into switch. So this is two year to your switch program on this here but what i've done guys is after i got the switch planted in here right then what i've done so that that switch was planted last year i actually did interseed it or overseed it uh this year again i've kind of frost seeded it if you will i took these tops and strategically placed them about two or three per pile 
around in here spread them apart so you know it doesn't create traps but they're what it is is it's structure it's rabbit habitat i guess you could say right and it puts some structure structure and some density to this reclaimed area so we've got you know i don't know i've got three four here four here i guess it is i've got three down there on a spot that comes out of where one of my legs of the transition transition comes out right here on the, uh, the bell kind of just a nice secluded piece and the rest of them are over here this is the, in, the really important piece of the puzzle that i'll show you here in just a minute but so i put these in here guys and what i'm doing is i'm taking the sprayer on the tractor and i've got it in the bucket i've got 45 gallons 40 gallons mixed up of glyphosate and 2,4-D and what I'm doing guys is I'm coming in here with this uh, with the uh, with the wand or the the handgun if you will and I'm spraying around um, so I'm spraying around each one of these pockets that I put in here each one of these I'm going to spray all the way around them about you know about not nah, eight six eight feet each side of them and I'm going to go through here and do this on each one, all the way down through here. So I've got, I think I've got, uh, what do I have? I think I've got uh, 25 of these piles, I think is what I figured out, 25 of these. So what I'm going to do is go around, like I said, guys, and spray around each one of these. Then what I'm doing is I'm coming in, so I'm killing the vegetation around them. I've got client trips here uh, leaving in a few days, so this is going to sit here and um, hopefully get it in and get it done before the rain so we've got that time for it to you know kill them grasses and broadleaves and everything around here this is you know, 24 d and glyphosate so we're trying to kill everything around them then what i'm going to do guys is i've got john comp uh has he reached out to me last fall and wanted to know my opinion on a on a blend a, a resource that i've been wanting to do for years and i've been doing for years but never had a place to purchase it right or never had a place to have my or recommend my clients reach out to to purchase it um what it is guys is john has um formulated a forbes and forage blend and that forbes and forage blend is just that it's building forbs and forages it's building food interior of your bedding now do you need to put that interior of the woods if, if you're cutting in, um, you know, if you're cutting in in uh, bedding areas, let's say doe bedding or buck bedding, habitat pockets, interior woodlots, well, it depends. If it's all poplar and you want something else in there, then it's got a bunch of everything in it, right? It's got, I, I don't remember what John said, a lot of different seeds in it that all relate to forbs and forages and browse, right? So what I'm doing is I'm putting this, spraying these around each one of these pockets internal of switchgrass so this is all perforated interior of switch because if it was all switch it's not bedding unless it's forced bedding unless it's pressure bedding so i'm putting these pocket these these um these piles in here for structure initial structure right off the bat then what i'm doing is i'm putting i'm spraying and then i'm putting this forbs and forage blend around each one of these and so what what the goal is is this couple years down the road when everything in that 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 forbs and forage blend has to offer grows then what i do when i about the time that my switchgrass is going to give out six eight ten years down the road right when i back a fire through all this these cedars will be so uh you know decayed at that point these tops that when i back a fire through here these are gone but those browse pockets that rootstock will still be in these areas and those browse pockets come back and i don't have to have then i have structure maybe even at that point uh maybe even have some stuff to knock down as far as some hinges or something right in the in the uh, later years but right now it's a perfect way because this is what i had you know some people maybe don't have cedars or you don't have tops to do but you'll you definitely probably would have some tops of some trees that you've cut out of your food plots or something like that I, what i wouldn't do guys is i wouldn't put stumps don't build these with stumps stumps uh, root base create predator traps um, but you can see how what i've done is i put them in here in a pile one way and then i switched them and kind of kind of made it rabbit rabbit worthy right so rabbits can get underneath it so when i spray around those all that forbs and forages will grow up around it and in it the deer will bed in these strategic locations and then like i said long term when we back a fire through this when this switch needs to be uh you know revamped if you will 
all these go away that forbs and forages are in that forbs and forages starts working on that root stock all of a sudden you've got multiple of these interior of these uh, cedar uh, or of the switchgrass and then throughout the years we're going to continue to maintain it so i can't be honest with you i've had so much i've had such good luck in the future with building these pockets of just stuff that i've collected myself you know i've went to like i was telling you before guys um, I, my grandparents used to live in Grand Rapids uh, in Wyoming, Michigan, if any of you are tuning in from there. And they had maples and walnuts and acorns and everything they picked out of their yard. And I always used to have them save them in buckets for me and I'd take them out and, and I'd go down there and pick them up myself or they'd pick them up and they did the yard work and I'd put them in these pockets. And I've done a lot of those over the years. I had a lot of clients do that too. Um, but it's a long-term goal, right? And it's hard to find that stuff. And who's got time to go around and uh, pick all that up, right? And transplant it and stuff like that. But now John's Forbes and Forage blend, you can order it, it's in a bag. It, so this is a way to use that Forbes and Forage to re reclaim these areas. Long-term goal, you know, uh, my switch is probably gonna be up, you know, two, three feet around them this year. If I just put these, these tops in here and I planted switch, yeah, I mean, maybe you'll get some, some deer that know that they can walk over to the edge of the field and maybe there's a, I'm very blessed with where I'm, what I'm building here, guys, because my ground has a bunch of, um, like, uh, a bunch of blackberry briars and all, stuff already in there that, you know, some of that's in that blend too. But I've got a bunch of that growing around these areas anyway, that's kind of growing with or in through and maybe a cedar here too. So I've got a lot of root stock. Um, that's kind of helping this process out but if you're taking a complete barren ground pasture you know just uh, hay crop field that's always been taken from you know over years and years and years I find it's quicker to put these tops now do they have to be cedar tops like I said no they can be you know hardwood tops just don't use the stumps so that's what I'm doing guys uh, so what I'm going to do um, before I plant this when I come back here in a couple of weeks um, after the residual of the 2,4-D is gone and I got I got time here off the road, I'm actually going to come in and probably take like a little, um, maybe just a little three-point disc or a harrow or a chain chain harrow or something like that maybe, and just run around these and break that up so I get some good seed-to-soil contact in it and then just let it, you know, seed it and let it go. To be honest with you, I think if I timed it right, right, right ahead of a good rain, um, or even if you just had the the uh, area clean enough, I think that with this vegetation gone, uh, you know, that I could be able to just spread it on that exposed soil uh, and don't have to till it or anything. Um, so I might try that on a couple spots too and then just run a cull packer or pack it in with the tires around it. I think that would, that would work because I've done that before and it's worked. I haven't done that with John's blend yet. Uh, with Northwoods Whitetails blend yet in this situation, but I've done it with my own blends over the years and that's worked that way. Uh, so I'm going to try it either way. John recommended going around these and just kind of irritating the soil a little bit. Um, so we're going to try it both ways. But that's what I've got going, guys. Perfect way to, to um, take the core of the property, bump up the value a little bit, be creative, and this one, I said, like I said, where we're starting, it's not the most important piece of it. These up here, these three up here I showed you guys ahead of me, and those interior ones are really crucial because that's right smack dab interior of the farm, and that's actually where both of the bucks that we shot last year off the farm ran into when they expired, uh, and a bunch of deer come out of that area and utilize that area, so I'm really densifying that up, and that's like three acres where this is probably a half acre, right? So all together, by doing this, uh, I, if my calculations are right, I'm gaining about five acres total um, back into correct density and density with bedding potential. So this is one guys to try. Um, be creative, like I said. If you have trees out in the center, if you have cedars, maybe you don't have to use the brush piles, right? If there's nothing out here like I've, like I've got, and many of you following this or watching this uh, have, um, and some stuff that I've designed and helped folks, you know, in, in just the recent last couple of recent years, especially bringing a lot of this, you know, old, old uh, pasture and stuff back into whitetail production, you know, try this. This is a, this is a very important piece here and I'll keep you posted on what this looks like as we go. It's like I said, it's not going to be a, you know, a video where I can show you, uh, big beautiful, you know, plants growing here in a couple of weeks, right? It's a long process, but I'll keep you posted on this one. 
and uh, I'll show you what they what it looks like throughout the uh, throughout this uh, timeline, if you will. Thanks, guys.